Thank you very much. Um, so, wie schon gesagt, ich bin, äh, es wurde noch nicht gesagt, aber das werdet ihr jetzt hören, ich bin Schweizer, der seit vielen Jahren in Amerika lebt, so ihr hört meinen Schweizer Akzent. Ich werde zwischen Deutsch und Englisch hin und her wechseln. Um, so. Dass jemand weiß, wisst ihr, wo Rutgers ist und New Jersey? Wo ist New Jersey? Außerhalb von New York oder ganz in der Nähe von New York City. So, ich selber wohne in New York City und ich äh, unterrichte dort. Ich werde euch ein bisschen mehr über mich erzählen. Let's go back to English, brief intro. Then I'll talk about the edit wars in Wikipedia. How can we detect what are controversial topics? And then how could we visualize it? And what I'm hoping that there will be a, dis a discussion and you will ask me questions. Then if you have time, we'll talk about what's popular over time. You know, are there certain topics that people go to the, in terms of page views? And I'll ask you some questions about that. And then the question is, are there controversial topics that are also popular and vice versa? So in terms of me, I'm basically an information visualization researcher. So what does that mean? I am interested to come up with new metaphors, visual displays for visualizing complex data, what's also called abstract data. And that's a very important distinction because if you look at Google Maps, that's very concrete data. Or you're looking at the beating heart, that's a three-dimensional space. But there's data, like 100-dimensional space, that's abstract. And there's not a clear metaphor for how to visualize it. I have a background in computational vision, which means is we want to understand how the brain understands visual information and how it computes. And I like to say, and I hope you don't feel offended, you're all hallucinating right now, meaning you're computing your re reality. We have a two-dimensional screen here, but you're able to extract three-dimensional cues from it and able to perceive that. So the question is, how do we do that? And since this is also a teaching opportunity or a teaching class, um, people thought that playing chess was really difficult. But now we have machines that play chess better than humans, but we don't have vision machines that are better than you are. Vision is actually a very difficult problem to solve. As mentioned, I have a filmmaking background. I've also done startups. And I'm interested in immersive photography. So if there's time, I'll talk a little bit more about that. Now, since I'm Swiss, and you're Austrian, and we are competitors, by the way, um, I can do this talk like a skier, you know, very precisely, go to the gates, very fast, bum, bum, bum. But what I hope, that you'll sort of bounce me around a little bit and ask questions. So I'm also counting on the senior faculty here to step in and, uh, you know, to ask questions, or to break the ice. So Wikipedia. How many of you are using Wikipedia? Okay, all of you. How many of you have edited a Wikipedia page? Okay, quite a few, all right. So, very popular application. It's peer produced, meaning volunteers are contributing all these languages, all these pages, and it's the fifth most visited page in the world, okay? So it's a major resource, plays a major role. And I will also connect it in different ways to certain behaviors, okay. So edit wars in Wikipedia. Since it's volunteers and it's a peer production system, you will have certain pages where people don't agree. They will get into a, what's called edit wars where they go back and forth between what should be on that page and what should not be. What I will present is data from 10 different languages. So it's not just going to be German, it's not just English, but it's also going to be Ara Arabic, Farsi, Hebrew. And I think that makes it interesting to see what's happening across languages. The data that I'm going to visualize is I didn't collect it. I've been working together with two physicists. And this is actually interesting. What you're seeing in big data is that multiple disciplines are converging on big data. So physicists are starting to bring their expertise of looking at very large data sets also to social science data. So there's Taha Yasari, who is now at Oxford, and also Janusz Kerches, who is um, in Budapest. So they, they collected the data, and they approached me and said, look, there are some patterns here we would like to make visible. You know, we have the standard visualizations, but I think what you've done would be useful to visualize some of the data. 
Are there any questions? So far, so good? All's okay? All right. And as mentioned, there was a paper that went viral, and it's interesting to see uh, what happens. You know, I've been in a situation where I have wished that certain things of mine had gone viral and nothing happened, and this sort of happened. A, we can talk about that why. All right. So how do we detect it? The measure we're going to use is the following. You, I edit a Wikipedia page. You don't like what I just changed, and you say, let's put it back to what it was before Anselm touched it. Okay? So that's what's called a revert. It's not like you go, no, no, I don't like the spelling of that word, or he forgot to put the article, or let me add another nuance. No, it goes straight back to what it was before. Okay? And this is something that we can detect automatically, meaning we can download all the Wikipedia data. That's the great thing about Wikipedia. All this data is available to you. You could bring it to your laptop. You could look at all the edit histories, all the talk pages. It's all transparent. And so what you can do is you can compare two page versions and see are they the same. Not doing linguistic analysis, just same or not. And there we can then detect these reworts. Next thing we do is we give a weight to each editor. How many times did that person edit this specific page? And when two people engage in a revert, you need two. We take the minimum of their weights. Then we sum it all up and we eliminate the one that's the highest value, the pair that has the highest value because maybe some pair, there could be an instance where two people don't like each other and so they might get into it and we don't want that to skew the results. So we're using a proxy. We didn't go look at each of the pages and in detail understand what's going on. That would not be possible because there's so many pages. We're using the rewards as a stand-in for an indicator for controversiality and Taha and Janos looked at it and said, it found that it's actually a reasonable indicator. Not perfect, but it, it's re relevant to the topic at hand. Any questions about that before we move on? Yes? Did you also have a look at how much was changed in a page? They looked at also in terms of how much text was changed. And most, they also looked at how quickly a people would come back and make changes, and they found that also time was sometimes an indicator. Um, that sometimes these rewords would happen very instantaneously, meaning a few seconds later there would be somebody there to change it. There's a whole series of papers where they talk in detail about how they analyzed or collected the data. Okay, now we're going to compare different languages. We're not going to do linguistic analysis. The way we do it is maybe you're aware if, let's say, there's a page about Vienna in French, there might be a link to the English page about Vienna. And if there is a page in German about Vienna, it also will have a link to the English page. And this is how we can connect the French and the, the German page and say, you're talking about the same thing because you're pointing to the same English page. Okay? So that's being used in order to be able to create the bridge between languages. All right. So this is what we get to see. So this is a simple um, categorization. I would call these the vanilla categories. All right. And if you look at English, German, French, and Spanish, the top 100 most controversial pages will find that in English, German, and French, most are related or a high percentage to politics. What stands out is in Spanish that there's quite a bit of argument or reverting going on related to sports. Okay. So that sort of stands out. If you look at Czech, Hungarian, and Romanian, you will find one thing that's different is Romanian has more pages related to arts and entertainment. Hungary is also about the, the one with the highest number or percentage is politics, whereas in Czech, there's also a lot around science and technology topics. Right. What I'm showing you here is a bird's eye view like 5,000 feet from above, you sort of get to see the breakdown. What are people arguing about, all right? And then here, we have Arabic, Persian, and Hebrew. And the thing that I want to highlight here in terms of Arabic, there's quite a bit about geography and also religion. Does this match your expectation? When you think, what could people be arguing about or reverting, engaged in edit wars, what would be the general categories?
Yes. Yes. Of wealth, of whatever. Yes. Uh, of maybe debates about ideology. What yes. The ideal world. How should it, should it look like? Something like this. This is what I would imagine. And if you had to map it into these categories? Yeah. Well, of course, these are all totally hierarchical concepts, so it's difficult. But actually, politics as a manifestation of collective will and of collective, I don't know, uh, decision making. Courses would be predestined mm -hmm. for such as it was. Yes. So, so it, it looks plausible. Okay, it looks plausible. So it's at some so far it's not jarring in that sense. No, well, not too okay, good. No, because that's the first step. You know, you look at the data and you look at how it distributes and you say, hmm, does this sort of match my expectations? One thing that I need to say about geography, well, there's quite a bit of edit wars around a countries, and it the edit actually the Controversy might not be about the border, sometimes it is, maybe it might be about the historical fact that's mentioned on the page. But we're using very large category, very large bins to categorize this. So this gives us a, a, a rough idea. Yes? Um, we have a lot of um, topics like uh, companies like General Motors or Nestle fit in. in that's a good point. So for example, the one that you will encounter in a second is Google, and that gets mapped into technology, okay? Um, then let's say, that's actually a good question, where would it go? You know, where would General Motors go? Uh, maybe it would get put into technology because it's around uh, that. But for example, in terms of the categories, as I will say at the end of the talk, I'm not happy with them. You know, this is sort of what I said, the vanilla way to do it, yes. <laughs> These were imposed f by us on top of the data, okay? So, and we, tr yes, because um, sometimes also with the Wikipedia page, it can be in multiple categories, you know, it gets mapped that way. This was top down and trying to reduce the number of categories, so not to have too many, okay? So it's, uh, um, okay. Is it okay to move on? Okay, so this is the big picture. Now, if you look at the top, 10 most controversial pages. In English, we have at the top George Bush. If we look for German, the most controversial, the most edit wars or reworts we have around Croatia. For French, it's uh, Salonguin Royal, I'm butchering her name. And for Spanish, it's Chile. Okay. So now we can see individual pages. By the way, if you're wondering what is this, this is the wrestling league in the States, okay? So there are some arguments around who is part of the company or the roster, but there's a lot of passion around that. So now it gets more concrete in terms of some of these topics that, or pages that there's a lot of revert activity in the different languages. How does that strike you? How would you explain this? Croatia, why is Croatia number one in terms of reverts? in German Wikipedia. Yes? Um, first of all, I would say that the server creation version of the Wikipedia is pretty small to have a critical impact on some kind of, of a, let's say, a, a discussion about the topic itself. So I think the reason for it could be the geographic proximity to Germany, Austria, Switzerland, maybe, because a lot of diaspora is taking place there. And maybe especially people who are in the diaspora feel an urge to talk about their country. Okay, yes, so we have, that's correct. Now one thing that's interesting as a mirror image, so there's an edit war going on around Croatia and some of the things that are being written about Croatia. And if we take one step forward, we could sort of guess who the parties are. What's interesting is that we don't have the page of Serbia in the to a top 10 list, okay? And it's not even in the top 100 list. Uh, we'll actually see that uh, several topics related to the former Yugoslavia and the Balkan are part of these um, con uh, contested topics. Are there any topics that are in common across the languages? Can you spot some? Okay. So if you look at it, 
We can see Jesus in three of the lists. Homeopathy is in two of the lists. And now this is where I come in. The way you had to determine this is you had to go through each list, individually examine the items, put it into your short-term memory, remember that it was there, go to the other list and see, is it in this list as well? And that's very time consuming. So the question is, how could we visualize the overlap between these lists? One way to do it is, maybe you remember from school or even from university, is to do Venn diagrams. And here we're comparing five different sets. That's a quite complex visualization. We can even go further and it gets even more complicated. But this shows you all the different overlaps between these sets. This is not what I'm gonna show you. I'm actually gonna show something that's derived from here to make it simpler to understand. And the approach that I'm gonna take is here. So we have a Venn diagram. We split it up into its disjoint subsets, into its parts. And then we use icons, or what are called glyphs, to represent the different subsets. So a circle means it's only in one of the three sets. A rectangle means it's in two out of the three. A, a, a triangle, three corners, means it's three out of the three. All right. And if you were to compare five sets, this is what it would look like. So this is what we have at the periphery. And here is the icon that represents the intersection of all five. Here in this circle, we have the ones that are four out of the five, the different possibilities. Here we have the three out of the five uh, that are present, then here the two, and here only in one of the five. So the way to read it is, if you want to know where is the intersection of all, you go to the center, and as you move to the periphery, you'll find things that are only in one or two of the sets, but not the others. And this shows you all of the possibility in a compact overview. So let me now show you some results in terms of the overlap between the top 100 most controversial pages for English, German, French, and Spanish. And what you will find is there's only two. We've already seen those, Jesus and homopathy. Why is there an argument about homopathy, if I pronounce it right? What do you think could be the argument about? Yes. Okay, so the argument is whether it's actual medicine or it's hocus pocus. Yes, and that people believe in it. Uh, they're ill, but they could only be cured by a real doctor. Then they get fired. Okay, I see. So that somebody says, it, they, yes, this is a real treatment, but actually it shouldn't be used as such. Am I hearing you right? Yes, and then the people who believe in it will get fired. Okay, yes, or they get worse. All right. So this is an argument about, is it science, is it not, is it effective, is it not, or is it like purely belief-based, all right? So then the other thing that I wanna draw your, so we're seeing all the possibilities, the way to read this chart, and by the way, this is a complex visualization. This is the first time you're seeing it, but it's customized for visualizing sets. So notice here, English. There's 67 pages that are only controversial in English. The mirror image means that 33 are also controversial in the other languages, okay? Whereas if you look for Spanish, there's 88 that are only controversial in Spanish, and there's 12 that are controversial in some of the other languages. So you can see for, in terms of English has the most pages that are also controversial in other languages, all right? Let's look at individual ones. So here we have, and this is another representation to show you are the individual items or the individual pages. And this is like darts, you know, a bullseye. And the way you want to represent it, if something is very close to the center or smack in the center, it means it was at the top of each list. So these two are not at the center, but pretty close. That means they were highly controversial in all of the languages on average. Not the most controversial, but a pretty highly controversial. So how do these topics strike you? Oops. My mic is moving on me. Um, does this surprise you? And by everything that I'm saying here, by the way, this is sort of not hard facts. These are impressions. This is what's coming from the data. These are patterns across the languages. I can move on. I mean, it's just curious how you respond, you know? So this, if, if we were to say, 
I would call these the Western languages. It's not perfectly correct because Spanish also includes South America, English includes America and the world, but French and German, this is what people are engaged in in edit wars. So there's some about global warming, but it's not global. Yes? Mm-hmm. I think it would be more uh, enlightening to see, for example, do the topics change? Okay. We'll look at that in a second. Okay. okay. By the way, this is the time period from the very beginning of Wikipedia, 2001, to all the way to 2010, 2011. For over this time period, the, the, the data has been aggregated. Okay. So that we're looking at the sort of the, and for many pages in 2006, 2007, that's when the most edit activity happened, you know, so. Um, okay, so this is the first. Here, if you're looking at Czech, Hungarian, and Romanian, what you will see is Google is controversial in all three, but it's further away from the center. It's smaller, a little bit more faint. That means it's not so high up in each of the lists. But what you can see here is, for example, there's arguments around between Hungarian and Czech around Romani people, also around the Holocaust, atheism, and here between Romanian and Czech around Jesus, but more so in Czech. That's why it's placed spatially closer to this one. And the reason it's further away from this circle here or is because it's further down on average on the list. So this gives you a, a qualitative impression in terms of what's going on. Here we have a tag cloud in terms of the major topics, so you can see it's mostly politics is a major theme or category. If there are no questions, I'll move on. Let's, yes. That's right. So which numbers does it break down? I mean, you... Okay, I usually go to five. And a, the reason is because this is a web-based application that was implemented a few years ago in Flash. But you could go beyond. You could go to six, seven, and eight. But then comes a point when it starts to break down because it's, it, it, it grows exponentially all the different combinations. All right? And there might be another better way to visualize it. Okay. But this gives you very rich information in terms of the positioning of the, 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 where it is in the list. So it's good for ranked lists. I initially developed it for search engines, when there were many search engines to do meta search and to allow you to get the big picture. In terms of how many inputs there are, it's 100, the top 100 results that we are comparing, or the most controversial. Okay. This is Arabic, Farsi, and Hebrew. And this is what we have here. So in the three languages of Wikipedia for Hebrew, Arabic, and Farsi, these are the three topics that are shared across. So we have Israel, Gaza war, and Islam. And then there are some that are shared across two of the languages, but not the other. How does that strike you? So the way I look at it, I have lots of data. I have different ways of displaying it. This is one way to make visible what's common across, what's shared, okay? And where it is from the center tells me where it was in the lists. You know, was it very controversial or not? And the size tells me that as well. Now, where I wanna go with this is I'm interested what were to happen when I take the results from English, Spanish, French, and German and compare it to Hungarian, Czech, and Romanian, and compare it to Hebrew, Farsi, and Arabic, where I lump them all together into one, three uh, sort of bins. And what came out is the following. So we have seven that are, when we mush them all together, that are across these three language or cultural spaces. And this, was com this is the pattern that gets revealed. Number one is Israel. Second, that's shared across these different cultural spaces. So here we have English, German, French, the Union. Here we have the Union of Czech, Hungarian, and Romanian. And here we have the Union of Hebrew, Farsi, and Arabic. So what this means, Israel is not controversial in all 10 languages, but it's at least controversial in one of these, maybe even two, in some even three. And we, some of them we've seen before. So then we have Adolf Hitler, Holocaust, 
Notice that they're quite close to the center, and here it shows you the longer the bar, the higher up it is in the list. And then we have God and atheism, and then we have Europe and evolution. When I saw this, to me this was a pattern, and I was surprised what came to the surface. Again, qualitative. This is not causal, this is not hard facts, but it's an impression, okay? These could have been different topics, but they're not. So what, what are people's reactions when you see that? Do you think this is just noise? Yes. Yes. This God, atheism, evolution are universal because they are abstract notions that are constantly you know, like in the background of our head. True. For me, what's interesting with God and atheism, we have the two extremes, you know, on the spectrum that are being sort of debated. What about Israel, Adolf Hitler, and the Holocaust? What does that tell us? Yes. Mm-hmm. Because evolution is a sort of a shared notion about what the human being is and how it evolves, where we come from, where we are going. It's a very, very, uh, let's say, profound concept in the understanding of especially Western culture. So why is it actually debated? And then I think of, of all this, especially from the US, this uh, trend in the direction of transhumanism how to improve human beings by technology or even mm -hmm. transcend the humanness by technology and so on. This fits very well into all these actually ideologically uh, biased topics. Mm -hmm. True, yes. Now, by the way, notice that evolution is small and more to the periphery, meaning it's not that high on average in these three spaces. Um, okay, I am struck by what I would call anti-Semitic themes. The number three, it's, it's not just one, it's not just two, it's three, and they're all related. And the reason, so now I will go, and I, I, I mentioned this to my host, that I will go out on a limb. You understand this expression? Ich gehe auf den Ast hinaus. Um, this is 2010, 2011. Look at the politics in Europe right now. Look at some of the marginal political parties. What's the rhetoric that they're using? They're using anti-Semitic themes. If you're looking in Hungary and Czechoslovakia, they're using anti-Roma themes. So what I would postulate, what we're seeing here is in a way, what's lurking under the surface? A poor reflection, but still a reflection, what's happening in society at large. And I was surprised to see that these three topics are shared across. And they're not just somewhere down in the lists in all of them, they're pretty, they made it to the top. So if I were not a scientist, you know, who needs exact proof, but somebody who's more a social scientist, or I wanted to see what's a, a signpost, or what could be coming in the future, or what's in the space, I would say, hey, this is a signal I would take seriously. Do you agree with me, or do you think I'm off, way out? Yes. I think this is, one, this is what people want to talk about, and the controversy only shows that there is a problem that must be solved because they, they don't know if it's ending or not. Do you know what I... Yeah, but you see, I was of the opinion that actually this, this is over, this debate. There, wouldn't, there shouldn't be a debate about the Holocaust. This is somehow settled. Yeah. No, uh, but, but it's not. It's not. No, but it's, it's actually quite active and alive. That worries me. Yeah. 
Okay, so just yesterday, walking around Vienna, there was the demonstration between the left and the right, you know? And the whole com a com so save me from myself. I'm waiting for reactions. I want to provoke you. Uh, I'm, I'm surprised. I think this is very much in the space. And I'm wondering whether people in Europe are basically, or we're, we're sort of saying, hmm, and we should pay much more vigilant attention to it. So now I said everything. Help me. Disagree, you agree. Don't agree. Yeah. Yes. Um, as you said before, putting it into a global picture, it's really very much focused either on Europe with uh, German, French, and Spanish, mm -hmm. and also the Czech, Hungarian, and Romanian, yes. which were directly affected with Holocaust. Mm -hmm. And on the other hand, the Middle East, mm -hmm. which are now still affected by Israel. Mm -hmm. So what about uh, pictures, let's say, from Asia? How does this relate? relate? Most likely it will not show up. Mm -hmm. It will not be there. But why isn't global warming there? Why isn't that number one? You know, why isn't income distribution or other things? Why isn't that shared across? <laughs> There's other things that could be there, you know? Um, this could be because of crisis, the world in the past, different crises, and when there are crises, people are looking for a strong leader. And I think because of the less education, so um, yeah, this, the, I see this development Yes, yeah, or oh, that's one of, yes. Uh, maybe let me scrutinize the data a little bit for, uh, let's say, methodological reasons. Mm -hmm. So actually what we know so far is that what you analyzed were the edit words, so yes. changing the reverts. Exactly, right? looking just at the reverts. So what we know is you analyzed different language versions to extract uh, topics mm -hmm. are the, have the highest uh, uh, rate of reverts. Yes. Um, but what we do not know is what the revert was about. Correct. So we do not know if it was simply, I don't know, a minor change or a big change or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, what else don't we know from a grammatical perspective? Mm -hmm. um, I don't know, maybe you can... No, no, you're correct. Yeah. We are looking at it from 5,000 feet. Yeah. And we don't know what the exact nature is of what they argue about. So what I, one thing I will talk about in future research, that's what we want to do. We want to actually go look and understand what is it really about. Are they arguing about the headline that should be formatted this way or that way? Or is, you know, are there some very salient words or that you can really understand what it's going on, what's going on? Yes, you're correct. Uh, the reason I'm willing to go out on a limb is to me, it just has, it suggests something, okay? So, and also it creates debate and I think it's also in, uh, interesting and ref, uh, I think it reflects, if I were to look at this through the lens of a poet, these are interesting themes that came out, you know, just so if you think about, a, they, they, they tell a story to me. I will move on now. Um, so, question is, you asked about what's happening across time. You know, if you look at, and this is just for English Wikipedia, to look at the pattern across time. So if you look all the way up to 2006, then we have 2007, 2008, 2009, and 2010. This is what's happening to the top, uh, the categorical breakdown. So we could say there's a shift from politics to geography without really knowing precisely what the, arc, the revert is about, okay? But based on our categorization scheme, that's what we see, all right? If you look at the popular English pages, notice where do we have most of the popular pages, meaning this has nothing to do with editing, this has to do with people loading that page in their browser and looking at it. So what do we notice? Most of them are related to arts and entertainment, okay? And in a second, we'll look at this in much more detail. Yeah, let me ask you this. What do you expect to be the most popular English Wikipedia pages? That's divorced from editors. This is you, users, who are driving what are the Wikipedia pages that get the most views. I've given you already a hint. Actually, you get much more information. Celebrity gossip. Okay, celebrity gossip. So people are, are, uh, want to know about that. 
What else? Is there anything else that surprises you in the distribution of topics? Sex tapes, okay, good, all right. So let's see, we'll look at it in a second in more detail. And here is also by year, here what I showed you first is by specific months and the same pattern goes across if we aggregate by year 2008, 2009 and 10. This is what it looks like, just a breakdown for the different years in terms of the controversial topics. And we can see that George Bush across time is a controversial topic. People are engaging in edit wars. You'll also see here Adolf Hitler, English Wikipedia we're talking about, but people are also arguing about Michael Jackson and uh, the September 11 attacks and so on. All right. So some of these we've seen already. So it's not that homeopathy is just in one year was very controversial. This is throughout the years and the same goes for Adolf Hitler and other topics. In the name of time, I'll just move on. I'm giving you impressions that we can go back and look at some of them in much more detail. I can also show you a live demo, but I wanted to sort of see. Okay. Now, this is looking at the most popular pages in Wiki uh, English Wikipedia. And what we see across these three years, there's 31, almost a third of the pages that are equally popular in each of those years. And here they are. So if you read these uh, pages, do they match your mental model of what you think that people will watch a go-to most in Wikipedia? And what breaks sort of your expectation? Yes? We can see that Wikipedia is not for research, it's for entertainment. Okay. Bored. okay, for entertainment and? If you are bored. If you're bored. Okay, so okay, so we see several pages related with sexual topics. If we go further, and we'll come back to it, this is now breakdown for specific months, 2006, 2007, a little way back. We can see almost 40% were equally pop and were popular in all of those months. And then we can see here on the periphery there were things, this may be way back, I don't know how old you were then, but these are specific to specific months. Here's the breakdown, here's some information. And here again, all five months, some of the very same pages show up that we saw for the years. Now I'm gonna ask you, when I saw this and I saw the high percentage of sex-related pages, I said, this doesn't make sense to me. If I wanna know about sex, I don't go to Wikipedia. <laughs> so why are they in the top 100 across the months, across the years? Yes. I do have a theory, especially for the YouTube, and I think it could also be true for the sex teams. Yes. That people have in their search box in the browser Wikipedia still selected, but expect to have some Google search or directly taking them towards the sex page. And but it's still as Wikipedia searches performed and they have taken to a Wikipedia page. Okay, so you're saying I typed in a sex-related topic, I didn't realize that I still had Wikipedia as my source and that's how I ended up there. Okay, that's one option. Other explanation or possible, what could be going on here? Automated links. Maybe. Automated links. How do you get to Wikipedia? By Google. By Google. You go via the search engines. So if those of you are interested in internet search, and by the way, you know, Google has Zeitgeist, you know, which tells you what are the most popular topics that people search for for a certain year. And people who do research in internet search, they know sex is one of the most common search queries. If you go to Zeitgeist, you will not find that. You get a sanitized list from Google. If you want to go to Wikipedia and see what are the most popular pages, it will, they will not tell you that either. You have to actually, these are specialized data sets in order to visualize this. Okay, so let's take the theory that people search and that's how they get to uh, Wikipedia. Tell me, how many pages in Google do you explore when you search for something? On average. On average. Hmm? 
eight to five pages? Eight to five results? Okay, great. So you never make it to the second page. Do you even make it to number six? No. Maybe you make it to number three. Okay, so if the search engines are driving this behavior that we're seeing, this is almost, again, again, what we saw before with the controversial topics, this is like a mirror image or a projection, not a perfect projection, what's happening in society, into Wikipedia. Here we're having a projection, possibly, of what people search for, and that gets manifested also in terms of what's popular in Wikipedia. So this is just in terms of the topics. Uh, if we take the title of a Wikipedia page, put it in a search engine, and then look, where was it? For Google, it was almost, uh, for more than 85% of the time, it was in the top three results. This is what it, for Yahoo, for MSN, then so many percentage between four and seven and so on. So we can really see many of the Wikipedia pages are in the top three, which is talked a second about. That's where people mostly pay attention. So remember, in search, location, location, location. Are there any of you who have an internet business? Are any of you responsible for doing search engine marketing for somebody? Are you learning about search engine marketing? <laughs> what is search engine marketing? Or search engine optimization? Nobody? So if you had a business, you would be very concerned where you show up in the Google search results. And sometimes you hear a big uproar when this Google decides to change its algorithm that somebody who was very in the first page or maybe even the top five suddenly finds themselves on page 10 and their business revenue drops dramatically, okay? So there's a fierce competition for where you are in the search results and for people's attention. And in a way that what I like to compare it to is like a game of musical chairs. You know that game? And what's the amazing thing with the internet is we can access almost anything or lots of things, but based on human attention, there's five chairs that are available for our attention, okay? Or we have to really know more. So what do you think is gonna happen if there's a Wikipedia result in number two or in number first, first position, second position, or third position? What's the effect of that? Somebody's gonna say, ouch, because they just dropped out of the top five and now they're six, okay? Or somebody was number 10 and now they were pu pushed to the second page. So, maybe some of you have seen this. This is what's called the golden triangle of search. These are eye tracking studies. So what it's showing you, this is where you pay attention, mostly. Top three results, and then you're not paying that much attention. And then you may be paying attention over here. Now this is an older screenshot. Google has changed its layout. It might have an info box here. But what you can see is this fierce, first of all, this is where people are. This is where you want to meet them. And if you get pushed down, you have to find ways, maybe by buying an ad, so that you're still on people's radar. So the way I see it is by Google and the other search engines deciding to have Wikipedia results, that's a nice safe bet. And at the same time, it also increases in a subtle way the demand for their ads, but they never have to talk about it. They can just say, hey, it's the algorithm. All right, I'm, try I'm trying to provoke you. Anyway, but what's interesting to me is, so to close the loop, we saw a very specific pattern in Wikipedia in terms of the search, in terms of what was popular. We had a theory, hey, maybe it has to do with the search engines or what people search for. And we looked at where is it placed and we saw, yes, most of those Wikipedia pages are highly placed. And it's very likely that people will have clicked on it and that's why that page gets that much play or that much page views. Is this a scientific proof? No, but it's a plausible theory. Of, in terms of what's going on based on different things that we know about people's search behavior and what we're seeing in Wikipedia. Responses. Sorry, as I'm messing with my headset.
example of the technological unconscious that's surrounding us? Yes, that's a nice way of putting it, yeah. Actually, that I would sign, uh, because subconscious is not perfect, it's not super precise, but it's there, it's present. So I guess if there's anything I want you to take from this lecture, Wikipedia is a reflection of multiple processes, not one-to-one, -one, not, you know, but it's, it's a reflection of what's happening in society. And sometimes you can use it to learn, get insights about what's happening in the real world. So for example, there is research where they're looking at Wikipedia activity to, in order to, they found that the more activities around the web page related to a movie that's just being released, it's correlated to its box office. And there's many more big data things where people are looking at sort of these social behaviors in order to get insight about what might be happening. Okay. Do people think it's, that it's easier to talk about political things than uh, reading any technical blog? Say more. Uh, they, they're talking, there is controversy about politics, about the Holocaust, about Adolf Hitler. Do they think they, they it's easier to talk about that? I think there's more people who care. It's a larger number that's engaged in that activity. There might be arguments you know, around a Linux or other technology topics, but it doesn't have the same energy. It doesn't have the same ferocity. OK. So um, we are looking sort of at the, the largest numbers. But, but people must think that they, 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 they are talking about that. And they, they, they do talking about that, but it's not easier than any other thing. Why, why is this ranking? I don't know. I mean, uh, the thing is, what you see is many people, I mean, um, well, the, uh, remember, I'm talking in generalities. Wikipedia is a representation. It's a public resource. And if you have a certain persuasion, you might say, I want to make sure that this persuasion is reflected in Wikipedia because this is a common resource. So yes, so that's when it comes back, we need to understand what the rewards are about, what are they arguing about. So could it be people who have just more politically motivated and go in and put certain slurs or certain things in and then the quote unquote, the domain expert then removes it in order to, because it's not appropriate. And there are certain web pages that are locked down because there's too much vandalism or too much um, modifications being made that are inappropriate. Um, remember, I came in to visualize the data to make some of the patterns visible and then one can debate what it, how valuable or reasonable it is. The people I worked with are physicists, so they put all kinds of measures to try to understand the phenomena are they analyzing, is it real, is, there, is it stable, a stable signal. And so there's a whole series that talks about what they did. Okay. So in terms of pop topics, arts and entertainment, but sex and health, especially sex being timeless, and if you compare across controversial versus popular over time, it's mostly geography related. And here are some of the pages. So United States is both controversial and popular. We have global warming. We have Adolf Hitler, who, George Bush. I was surprised by William Shakespeare. And also uh, Israel being popular as well as controversial. In terms of future research, I mentioned the categorization is sort of a vanilla categorization. And if you do more fine-grained, uh, sort of bottom-up categorization, you will end up with something different. I'm now looking at the relationship between the editors. And in particular, do they e edit the same kinds of pages? You know, Yes, they're engaged in an edit war, but do they have certain pages that they focus on? And do they also do what's called cross-border edit wars? So they do it in English, but they also do it in German, or they might do it also in French uh, around a certain topic. Then looking at a temporal analysis, you know, do the editors that are engaged in these uh, edit wars stay the same over time, or do they come and go? And now a discourse analysis by looking at exactly what's going on, by looking at the text snippets. Thank you for being here. Please ask questions if you can come up to me afterwards as well, and if you want to talk more.